Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Wednesday, April the 26th is race number seven at Keeneland. We're going a mile and an eighth on the turf. It's an entry level allowance race for three year olds. And let's take a look at this field. I want to remind everybody, head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com, download those free Formulator Pass performances and handicap along with us as we take you in post position order. And down towards the rail is the number one, Yes Mon. Yes Mon is 30 to one on the morning line. She, he was 88 to one most recently and finished last, but he's stretching out and should show at least brief speed. I'm gonna look at it and say, this is, if this horse doesn't make the front, major, major error. Um, and having said that, I'd be absolutely floored if this horse won. Lone win came entered for a tag over the uh, Tapita surface yes. at Presque Isle Downs. But as we take a look at our time form U.S. pace projector, not surprisingly, they do have the stretch out sprinter Yes Man on the lead, which could be good news for a horse like the eight, Don't Split Tens, ridden by Joe Bravo. If you look at this pace projector and believe that Yes Man really isn't a win factor, there's a good possibility that Don't Split Tens will inherit this thing at some point. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and this is a horse that has good tactical speed. I don't think the one is going to be able to see out the distance. The question then becomes, do you think the eight can kick with the horses come from the back? And we'll talk more about don't split tens. We want to take it in post position order. The two is Gorgeous Kitten. Gorgeous Kitten was an okay third last time mm -hmm. out over the synthetic surface in the rush away stakes. And we saw one of those rush away also rans Cool Arrow come back to win. That horse switched to dirt to win the Hilton Memorial on Saturday at Charlestown with an 88 buyer. Gorgeous Kitten, you would think with this pedigree, Turf will be no problem. Yeah, turf shouldn't be any sort of issue. Mike Maker, one of the rare negative formulator facts, past five years synthetic to turf at Keeneland, one for 21, 79 cent ROI. This just this horse has never done anything to, to wow me, really. I haven't been impressed with any of his starts. I think getting back to the turf should help, but um, I. I just don't like him. And getting back to the turf might help the number three, Giant Payday as well. This horse is getting blinkers for the yeah. first time, maybe to infuse a little bit more speed into him. This horse was not embarrassed in the spiral. He was only beaten three lengths. He passed a couple of tired horses that day. But in the Palm Beach, he was forced very wide, turning into the stretch two back against Ticonderoga, who would be heavily favored yeah. in this race. Plus, Giant Payday's got that race over this course uh, last fall, where he showed off a strong late kick. If he gets a little bit of pace, which is questionable, He's going to come running. Yeah, he's really interesting in here. I, I, I've liked him really all throughout his three-year-old campaign. The most recent start, I think, was odd, and I wonder if that's part of the reason the blinkers go on. He was... He wasn't that far out of it down the front side, but then going into the first turn and then back side, it's almost like they just ran away from him. And if you remember that day, that was spiral day, speed did very, very, very well. well. So uh, the fact that he came on a little bit at the end, I think is a positive. The one thing that I'm a little bit concerned, Ian Wilkes, his numbers are just not good first time blinkers over the past five years. Seven for 125. I do think this horse has some talent, though. The number four, Don't Blame Rocket. Undefeated from two starts at the fairgrounds. This is going to be the class tests for Don't Blame Rocket, but this horse does have good tactical speed. He's trained by a high percentage outfit in uh, Al Stahl. The runner-up from that last race came back, ran a good second with a 77 buyer on dirt. I like this horse. He's got nice tactical speed. He shouldn't be outrun. The concern now is, you know, he was in for 30 to debut. He came back against softer. Now this is certainly going to be the toughest test of his life. And let's just call a spade a spade. He's going to have to get faster. Morning line favorite at two to one's the number five Solio, all world connections. Javier Castellano, Graham Motion. This horse finished behind Giant Payday in the spiral. Turf is probably what he wants, but he was beaten favorite two and three back as well. Yeah, I, I was disappointed in the effort two back. And then the spiral, I want to know part of him. He just never picked his feet up. But again, as we talked about it, you can make the case that the way that track played, he was really up against it. Motion. Been a tough meet thus far, which is kind of uncharacteristic for motion at Keeneland, but also past five years, synthetic to turf. Second off the bench, he's only one for 23. So this is just another horse. If we think the pace may not develop, I think he's going to be way, way up against it. The number six is untimed play going out for the connections of the Pizza Man, who's pizza. nearing his return to action. Untimed play was a maiden winner last time out at the fairgrounds. And this horse just takes a nice step forward with each and every star. He's been beaten by Giant Payday a couple mm -hmm. of times, beaten by Don't Split Tens, but I think he's slowly rounding into his own. Yeah, he finished really impressive, I thought, in that most recent start on March 9th down at the fairgrounds. Uh, the concern for me, we've only got one work since then, one true actual official clocking. So I, I wonder why we haven't had any more work out of him. 
Um, he has the highest last out buyer as well as the highest last out time form US rating in the field. If you just want to look at those two things, you could certainly do worse. I'm interested to see what we get out of the number seven young American. I've always been a little bit of a fan of this horse. He's going to be a first time gelding for his return to turf. He did run well on turf at Churchill mm -hmm. Downs last year. He was entered earlier in the Keeneland meet. It looked like it was a really nice spot for him on dirt. Kenny McPeak scratched him. He's going to run him here. The lack of pace could work against this horse. Yeah, it certainly could. And, and I don't know what we're going to get out of him in first time gelding. I don't know if it was a physical thing or maybe just mental where he was a little bit of, a bit of, bit of goofball, but um, I, I think he could be another one that just compromised if the pace does not develop. Let's take a look at our top selections for our Wednesday race of the day. I like Giant Payday. I'm hoping that the addition of blinkers can get him a little bit closer to the pace, but he ran so well over this course last year that I think he just likes it. He's going to come with a strong kick. But tell us about Don't Split Tens. I mean, a lot of positives, especially from a pace standpoint, and boy, this horse looked good too back beating on time play. Yeah, I'm just drawing the line through the most recent start. That was that washed off race. We had Mr. Misunderstood in there who just you know, he doesn't want to have fast dirt. He ran poorly in the Illinois Derby. Two starts back, this horse I thought was just very, very impressive. And I don't think un untimed play ever really threatened him that day. The career debut wasn't bad either. And I know that untimed play got the best of him by a nose that day, but I just think the way this race sets up on paper, I don't think the one's going to be able to see out the distance. I think the eight inherits this thing. I think the most likely winner is Giant Payday. I just think he has some talent and some ability. Some concerning numbers, though, for the eight, which is the only reason that I'm not a little bit more bullish on him. Neil Passon's numbers at Keeneland are awful over the past three years. One for 52, only eight of them have hit the board. And the Fairgrounds runners, their most recent start at the Fairgrounds on turf coming to Keeneland, thus far they're two for 34. So the, the form just has not translated or transferred very well. I'm hopeful that race dynamics work for the eight. Don't split Maybe tens. a little bit of value as well. Hopefully. Six to one on the morning line here on Don't Split Tens. Matt's going eight, three, six, and five. I'm going to go three, six, five, and eight in our Wednesday race of the day. If you're betting the Wednesday Keeneland card from home, DRF Bets invites you to be a VIP for a week. You start with a $300 bonus and there are lots more goodies at drfbets.com slash VIP. Approximate post time for the 7th at Keeneland on Wednesday. Your formulator race of the day is 424 Eastern. Best of luck.